Hello everyone, and this is our second conservation of energy problem in which we have an object on the top of a ramp of inclination theta and height h. It's moving already at the top of that um, ramp with an initial velocity v0. It's moving down the ramp, and as it goes down the ramp, it will obviously accelerate and uh, we need to calculate the final velocity or the final speed really, uh, the magnitude of the velocity of the object as it reaches the bottom of the ramp. Uh, this ramp is a smooth ramp, no friction, uh, and uh, given our g h v naught to be determined is v f. So um, as I uh, showed you in my lecture slides, the PowerPoint slides for conservation of energy, there is a strategy that has to be followed when solving problems involving conservation of energy. And the strategy involves picking two important points um, and setting the energies equal to each other uh, in the absence of non-conservative forces such as friction or air resistance. So in this case, again, we do not have friction, so we follow that specific strategy. We are going to pick two points, find the energies at those two points, and set them equal to each other. So the two points should be the top of the ramp over there, I'm going to call that point A, and the bottom of the ramp over here, I'm going to call that point B. Uh, and before we figure out what kind of energy we have at point A and at point B, we need to pick, choose our level of reference and show it. So for the level of reference, I'm going to choose the bottom of this ramp and I'm going to show that this is my chosen level of reference. This is very, very important to do. Uh, otherwise, you cannot even discuss the possibility of an object to possess gravitational potential energy. So there we go, this is my level of reference, and I, uh, I use the symbol LOR to show that is the potential, that is the level of reference from which the potential energy will be determined. So at point A, the object is in motion already, so therefore it will have to have kinetic energy. And the object is above the level of reference, so it also has to have gravitational potential energy. So at point A, we have both kinetic and gravitational potential energy. At point B, the object is in motion. That's what we need to calculate, how fast it moves there. But point B is on the level of reference, so therefore there will be no gravitational potential energy, only kinetic energy. So at point B, we only have kinetic energy. So we have energy at A, energy at B, we do not have friction, so in the absence of non-conservative forces, we do not have to worry about the extra element of the work done by the non-conservative force. All we have to do is set the energies equal to each other, so under equations, let's go ahead and write that down, kinetic energy at A, plus gravitational potential energy at A must be equal to kinetic energy at point B. Kinetic energy at point A will be one-half mv naught squared. That's the <clears throat> speed of the object at point A. Gravitational potential energy at point A. Point A is at the distance h above the level of reference, so we're going to have mgh equals kinetic energy at point B, one-half mvf squared. So in this equation, uh, we know everything but mass and final speed. How do we get rid of the mass? Well, we first factor it out from the left-hand side here, and that's going to give us m, open parenthesis, one-half v naught squared plus gh, close parenthesis, equals one-half mvf squared, and now we divide both sides by the mass, we have to do the math correctly and show the work in a correct way, which is going to leave us with the equation 1 half v naught squared plus gh equals 1 half vf squared, since the mass is cancelled out. And then um, to solve for vf, we are just going to have to do a square root of 2 times 
the left hand side of this equation which is one half v naught squared plus gh you can maybe simplify this by distributing the two over here which is going to give us vf equals square root of 2 times 1 half v naught squared gives me v naught squared plus 2 times gh is 2 gh and that is going to be our expression for vf in terms of the given v naught g and h thank you